Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Dave and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number four of the series where I'm trying to learn how to use this machine right here, this CNC machine. It's a Shark HD 510 and I am uh, I'm working my way through figuring out how to use it and the software that controls it too and figuring out how to incorporate this machine into my shop with my other tools and the other methods I like to use to make these guitars like this one right here which is the one we're making in this series. This is the first guitar body I've ever made uh, and, and I'm going to turn it into a guitar before it's all said and done with the neck and everything. But in this video we're, gonna, we're still working on machining this body. We're going to be cutting it out, we're going to be cutting the pickups, the control, uh, control holes and the control cavity and the control cavity cover here too. Right here. So that's what we're doing in this video. I hope you stick around and check it out if you think you might like that sort of thing. And if you dig it, how about you give me a like and subscribe. Anyway, let's get rolling with the video. Alright, so we've got our uh, top glued back on. Everything came out real nice. I'm real flat in the back. Got my alignment holes uh, that remained aligned here because I used those little dowels in it. And I think we're in good shape. I'm going to... Uh, uh, I'm going to bring this on over to the CNC and we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut out the body profile, the neck pocket, the pickup pockets, the control holes, and then we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the control cavity cover and the control cavity itself. So uh, anyway, I'm going to, uh, what I've got to do though first is I have to go over to the, uh, the V-Carve and I have to update all of the uh, G-code files to reflect the new thickness of the wood because when I created the original G-code files I had it uh, going into a piece of three quarter inch MDF. So, uh, so now I have to update the file with the new thickness of the wood and it should be a very simple thing to do. I'm just going to go open up each file, change the thickness, probably increase the number of passes that it's going to take to go through this and then uh, we'll come on back here and we'll set up and we'll run it through the uh, CNC and see how it comes out. Anyway, let's get going with that right now. So I'm pretty excited about this. This will be really my first actual guitar body I'm cutting out on the CNC machine. I don't know why I look so angry in that last clip, but I'm not. I'm just probably a bit nervous. So anyway, so I'm just going through now and I'm opening up each, uh, each of the G-code files, which each G-code file does a different operation. For instance, pickups I have as one G-code file. And I'm resetting it up for the thickness of the wood, which in this case is inch and five eighths. And I'm increasing the number of passes, uh, selecting uh, the bits that I'm gonna use for this. And uh, right now I'm actually gonna select the tabs and you can see me moving them around. I've got four tabs, which are the little, little pieces basically that get left uncut. So the uh, part I'm cutting out, the body in this case, is still attached to the perimeter, which has the uh, the alignment pins in it. Anyway, I just go through each of these different uh, files. I update them for the new thickness. I'll do a little test run on it here, and then we're ready to go. I'm just going through my normal setup process here. I've got the body blank with its alignment pins down on top of the alignment fixture. And that fixture is pinned down to the spoil board. And that, that fixture really works out great. I'm really uh, happy with the way that's working out for me. Of course, I'm resetting the Z axis, which is the height. And uh, get my dust boot on there and just start cutting away. I chose to cut the perimeter uh, cut out first. I don't know that there's a right or wrong to that, but I did. You can see I had my hand on it there for a second. I've got it there again. I feel like I was being a little too aggressive with the speeds. Um, it was uh, beginning to chatter a little bit. I slowed it down on the pendant and it slowed the operation down and that cleared up. It's just one of those things I've got to learn about how fast you can push the machine and when you should hold back a bit. So now I'm going through and I've cut the pickup pockets. 
and the neck pocket. I believe that's the neck pocket going now. And here's the neat thing about that machine. While it's doing its thing there, I can uh, move over here and that, those are actually neck parts. I'm gonna start getting ready to mill up all my neck pieces. So I just, uh, while that was going, I can keep my eye on it and work on the neck at the same time. So now I'm drilling the control holes. That's a 1 8 inch down spiral, down cut bit. Then I cut those four holes. And then I'll swap it out and I'll put in the uh, 1 16 bit to cut the slot for the uh, blade switch. I'm just cleaning up some of that fraying on the edges from the up cut bit. It cuts really, it cuts really clean down the sides, but it does, and it helps evacuate the chips as you're going, but it does leave that top edge a little bit frayed. So here's my little 16th inch bit that cuts that slot. So I'm real happy, everything went really well. So now it's time to flip it over to do the back. This is where I had a little bit of trouble and I still am not sure what happened. And I don't know how to prevent it from happening again. But you'll see here in a second what I'm talking about. It all came out all right in the end, but it's a little frustrating when you don't know what went wrong. So uh, here's how we finished up. Um, I think all this came out beautiful. The uh, profile cut came out nice. I've got definitely some sanding to do out here, but I think it came out good. The pickups look good. You can see I used a, an up cut bit, which leaves a little bit of fraying on the edges, but that's, uh, it's still kept at a sharp edge. I just need to clean that up with a little bit of sandpaper. Like, so I, I'm gonna router this around anyhow, so. Uh, Anyway, and the, uh, you know, here's that, here's that uh, neck sample I made before, and that fits really well, just like it did uh, in the template. That fits nice when I put my straight edge on. If I could find my straight edge, I've still come out really straight. So see that's landing right down the center, right on my center line on the body, right up the center of the, uh, of the neck. So overall everything was coming out really well until I got to the back and I went to do the back. Let me get that guy out of there. So I got it around to the back and I was cutting out my control uh, cavity cover and the control cavity itself. The cover hole went fine and uh, drilling in these uh, magnet holes went fine too. When I started cutting out the cavity portion here, which is still hanging on by these two tabs, I'll, I'll, I'll cut that out in a minute. For some crazy reason, I hope, I hope you can see it in there, it ran off it just kind of went haywire and that thing just all on its own just started taking off. Thank God I caught it. I, have, I was here in the shop, of course, and I turned to look and something didn't seem right. So it ran off that way. And then so I thought, well, let me take it out. I'll take it out of the computer, put it back in, try it again. And it ran off down here, you can see. Try it again, it ran off here. And I'm like, I have no idea what went wrong. And I didn't know how to fix it. I kept going back to the V-carve, checking it. Uh, everything looked, uh, everything looked fine to me. Um, you know, I, I checked whether or not all the vectors were joined, and I ran the toolpath on the computer a few times to see what was going on. It all seemed to work fine. So finally, I shut off the com the, the laptop out here. I shut off the uh, CNC machine. I kind of rebooted everything, put it in again and ran it and then it cut it out fine. It cut this shape here. So some glitchy thing happened uh, and that taught me to, th there's a, a way of doing what they call an air pass 
which is you can run a certain tool path and the bit stays an inch above wherever you're going to cut and you can watch it see if anything's going to go wrong i think i've learned to probably do that the first time i run uh, run a tool path although you know when i did the body of this guitar on the mdf it went fine so i don't know i guess this is part of the learning process if anybody out there has any uh sense of why this might happen uh i would really appreciate you letting me know Thank goodness this is going to be a painted guitar, it always was, so I'm going to cut me some little pieces and fit them in here, sand them, and it's going to be great. But, if that was to happen on a really expensive piece of wood, I would be pretty upset, especially one that was going to get stained. Anyway, the learning continues. So just to finish up this stage of the body, I'm going to go ahead and run it around my spindle sander just to clean off all the tooling marks, which is normal. I do that same process when I'm using my, uh, my router and a template. So of course I'm going to pick the right size spindle to get into the different areas of the body. And I'm just going to clean it up. And actually that uh, upcut spiral bit. Uh, did a beautiful job. It left me very little to take off, so I just zipped around it a little bit and uh, cleaned up really nice. So now it's onto that back control cavity cover. This happened to be a piece of maple I had left off of another, uh, another guitar build I did. And I'm just planing it down. Uh, the, the total thickness of the depth of the, uh, the cavity cover uh, is one quarter inch. And so I'm just gonna plane it and then I'll run it through my sander a couple times to get it nice and smooth and make sure it's flat. So in V-Carb, I actually used the drawing of the um, control cavity cover hull and I put it onto another layer in the computer on the on V-Carb and I used that to then uh, cut out this uh, cover here. So you'll see in a second when I put it on it, but it was just came out absolutely dead accurate. came out really well. So I'm just going through my normal process now of uh, gluing the piece down and getting it set up to go. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, clear out the center section. Oh, and you can see I'm doing the the, uh, the air pass right now just to make sure it wasn't going to uh, go haywire like it did on the back of the guitar body. But uh, so what I've got to do, I think I explained it before, is the the um, blade switch needs an inch and three eighths of clearance inside this body. And part of making that clearance is I had to recess this quarter inch thick uh, control cavity cover. I recessed it one eighth of an inch and I left the perimeter a quarter inch thick which will, is thick enough for the magnets and I uh, thinned down the center to one eighth of an inch thick which is going to allow that uh, blade switch to fit in there and give me room to get the wires hooked on it and everything else too. So now I'm just going to go around and, uh, and cut it out. So now, since I used the original uh, hole in the design software to make this control cavity cover, they've come out to be exactly the same size, which is obviously a mistake since I've got to get, in, in this case, paint in there or, uh, or clear finish or whatever. 
So next time I do this, I'm going to actually uh, uh, reduce the size of the cover. When I make that new layer, I'll reduce the size of the cover by, I don't know, I'll probably try 10 thousandths of an inch or something like that, which ought to give enough room for some finish in there. And, uh, but in the case of this one, uh, I uh, first went through and I filed down all the edges, uh, or I filed down the tabs rather with my file. And then I just cleaned it up with a piece of sandpaper. And then uh, after I checked the fit, it, which fit perfect, um, I went around afterwards with that file again and I just filed, very carefully filed all the edges down to reduce the size of it to where it's gonna fit nicely in the uh, control cavity hole and, uh, and still have room for a little bit of finish to get in there too. But I mean, when I tell you this thing fit, it fit perfect. In fact, uh, I was kind of afraid to push it all the way down in for fear I would never get it out again. Well, folks, we better leave it about there for now. So uh, let me know what you think. Am I encouraging you to try this machine out? Am I discouraging you from ever trying to CNC machine out? Do you think it's woodworking? Do you think it's not woodworking? Let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, I hope somebody got some little, little something out of this. And I'm enjoying the heck out of doing this. And I'm enjoying making these videos too. Anyway, come back and check me out next week. Until then, God bless you. And you all have a wonderful week.